What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, as you can tell by the title of the video, it's just going to be another little update video, kind of like the last one. Uh, I just watched that video to see where I left off and I hate to say it, but I've literally made no progress at all since that last video. Um, and as you can tell, I'm wearing all white today and I'm not doing any work. So I just kind of want to talk about some things. The channel's not dead, but I've been busy. Christmas is around the corner. Um, and I've been hunting down little issues here and there, but, uh, I just wanted to give an update on kind of how things are going. I'm, 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 believe it or not, I'm getting kind of tired of, Hey, fix this, fix that. I want to get to upgrades and showing more cool things, some races and stuff like that. Like the good stuff. I'm tired of fixing crap all the time. But like I said, I've made no progress at all. I was working on the, uh, rear main seal because I have an oil leak. I was like, it has to be that seal. Cause I didn't replace it when I rebuilt the motor. I thought it was just old and bad. Well, I replaced it and the leak is still there. So my next guess is the oil pan gasket, I, I guess. Um, I didn't suspect that to be the issue to begin with because I replaced that when I built the motor, but maybe I pinched it on install, maybe a screw, I don't know. I don't know when I was bolting the screws up from the oil pan to the block, if it pinched the oil seal, I have no idea. So next thing I'm going to do is replace the oil pan gasket. Um, am I going to make a video over that? Maybe. I don't know. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to drop all the bolts out of the oil pan. Obviously, after I drained out all the oil, I'm going to try and fish out the oil pan gasket with my fingers. I just got to be able to get my fingers in there, like a little tool to take that gasket out, fish it out, and then I can easily dry it, maybe with like a cloth, go around the whole rim of the oil pan, brake clean it, put the new one in put it all back up if the oil pan drops enough where I can just slip my fingers in across the top if not I seen another way where a guy was working on a Durango same frame as the Jeep um, where he moved the front end accessory cover and then that allowed him to basically take out the whole oil pan out the front that was a, that was one way he was able to get the oil pan out without having to drop the uh, the front diff and taking axles out and all that other stuff because I know that can be a pain on these uh, Jeep Grand Cherokees so that oil pan gas is going to be next. Um, whenever it's nice enough outside and I feel like doing it, I'll get to it. Uh, but I still have that oil leak and it's kind of frustrating, especially because I'm like, I'm hunting down problem after problem and I just rebuilt this motor. I want to be able to enjoy it. And then on top of that, um, things that have been going on, the damn long tube headers keep cooking up everything underneath the vehicle. I'm, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, them long tube headers have given me nothing but problems they're cool it's cool saying you have them it gives the exhaust a nice little tone and yeah, there's some performance gain they're a pain yeah, i'm getting tired of them things so i try tucking up all the o2 sensors and all the wire everything that dangles around there i try tucking it up underway putting them under heat shields zip tying them ah then what happened this this is my map sensor that went bad i don't know where jeep started running like crap so I had to replace that. It was a $40 part. Easy to do. It's just on the back of the intake. But dang, it sucks when you keep running an issue after issue after issue. Like, I want to move forward. I'm tired of repairing crap. And then, speaking of repairs, because I mentioned it in my last video. Um, let me walk outside. I'll show you guys. The uh, front end of the Jeep was all dicked up. And it's completely my fault because I was just being an idiot in the snow. Bang, right there. So, uh oh, license plate. It's all just dicked up right there. And it looks like crap. It's all scuffed up over here. It's just missing. And then I got the, the side skirt over here that was uh, ripped off as well. And you can see my nitrous line sitting right there, that steel braided line. I gotta get that replaced. More concerned about the bumper right now because my uh, lines aren't lining up anymore and it just kind of looks like crap. But uh, there's that. I'm gonna come back out here in a second talk about some more things that are I've got going on. Um, so yeah, that's that. It's more like I'm just tracking down problem after problem, trying to get it all fixed, and then Christmas is right around the corner and. I have uh, spent way too much money this year on this Jeep trying to get it up and running and nice and all this other stuff. I figured I need to 
make sure the people around me are getting stuff as well. Take care of those who are around me. So, um, but with that said, I still have some goodies that I'm going to show you guys. So, all right here, flip this around. These are new bumper parts. And if you can tell, especially by that right there, this is all going to the front end of a Jeep SRT in a 2017 plus. Um, I've talked to a guy who has done this. Uh, the bumper's actually in the backyard. I got it suspended in the air because I don't want to get it dicked up. But uh, I'm going to work on that. Why it's not done right now, I've had the bumper for some time. I took it to a shop and they were like, oh, it's going to be 600 bucks for us to paint this bumper and get it all done. Well, they're asking me where I got it from. I think I got it from carparts.com. The problem is, is that you have to sand the bumper. It comes some type of primer on it but you need to sand the bumper then you need to prime it and then you got to sand it make it smooth maybe even prime it again and then then you got to do your base coat and you got to make your base coat make sure that's all fine you got to do a couple coats of that then you got to do your clear coat and you got to make sure there's no what they call orange peel where it looks like it's a little rough and bubbly in the paint um i could have got it painted but like i said christmas around the corner and i want to make sure I'm not just being selfish and spending all my money on stupid car parts for no reason at all. So I'm thinking that I might order all the paint stuff myself. I mean, looking at how to do it, uh, we're, the worst thing that happens is I dick it up and I have to go get it painted again. But when it comes to the priority list, the bumper is on there, but I need to fix some other things first and be responsible with some other things. I'm going to work on the bumper. I'm going to get it done. I'll probably make a video on that. I have pretty much have all the parts. And then that's that. So let's get to the other goodies. Um, Cause I do have parts laying around. You saw maybe some of them. So here, that is a Hellcat throttle body. Oh yeah, 92 millimeters. I traded up a bunch of ammo that I was not going to use to a guy who had a Hellcat, upgraded to something else. We just made a one for one swap. I gave him a bunch of ammo. He gave me his Hellcat throttle body. It was a good deal. Um, I will get on that as soon as I get the Hellcat throttle body adapter. Um, let me take this outside once again for the Jeep so I can show you guys. Cause this is, this is going to be, it's a project, not much of one, but it's going to be one. So here's something that I'm going to run into an issue with. The one, I don't even know what size that snout is if it'll even fit over this throttle body cover i have no idea i may end up having to get a whole new intake now that i'm looking at it but the throttle body on here i ported myself i don't remember what it's like 82 millimeters from the factory and i think i opened it up to like 86 or 87 by doing my own little porting and it's kind of a hack job i did the video on it but i'm not really happy with it and then one thing i never even mentioned to anybody was like when i was porting it i was taking out so much material that i ended up seeing like a hole from this this material here the like where the gear set goes into so it's just I did a botch job on that um and I've never been happy about it so whatever that is it's going from 80 whatever to 92 millimeters well with the throttle body adapter from modern muscle is 95 millimeters so am I going to try and port this one out again possibly but um one thing I can port out to match that adapter easily is the intake manifold, the, the, the mouth of the intake manifold. Matter of fact, let me uproot this because I had this undone. If you guys can see, there's the intake manifold and then I have this nitrous plate um, attached to it. So what I'm thinking is, is that I'm not going to be able to fit this, the adapter, and the nitrous plate to the intake manifold. It's like, it, it's a lot of material to bunch up right in here. And this doesn't really have a lot of more play to put another inch, two inch block in between all this. And then on top of that with the adapter, yeah, it will fit the Hellcat throttle body to the 6.4 intake manifold, but how is that gonna bolt up with the nitrous outlet plate system here? So let's move to that next topic about the nitrous i'm actually getting kind of sick and tired of the nitrous itself and i'm gonna walk around and tell you 
tell you why. I got trains out in the distance. Um, as you can see here, there's wires all over the place. I never took the time to really clean it up. There are wires all around here, all kinds of wires up here. And then I got this MDS window switch. And there's just wires everywhere. This is this painless wiring thing that was not painless. And I got these power wires that are going through the vehicle. And then we come to the back. I got my nitrous bottle back here. And I never even finished this up. I just get too busy with things. But the problem that I'm having and the thing that I don't like, uh, head back inside. That whole kit itself, I, I'm not exactly sure the exact number, but it's north of two grand. At first you get the uh, the kit itself, however you option it out, and it goes to like twelve, maybe thirteen hundred dollars. Well, then I had the the bottle heater itself, the the uh, the mount, and that was like three hundred dollars. And then you got to buy these, all this other stuff. The gauges and all this other crap so it probably came around two grand maybe a little bit more and the problem is is that i spent all this money for a system to go fast but especially now in the winter time you can't always use it when you want to by the time i drive somewhere and i turn the system on to heat up the bottle the bottle's so cold because it's been sitting outside i get somewhere and the pressure's up a little bit and by the time i run all the errands that i need to run and i get back home my bottle pressure is probably up but while i'm driving out on the road and there's this Audi or Subaru or Mustang that's trying to test me. I don't have the nitrous ready to go. Kevin, I, can I give them a good run on my motor? Yeah, but I spent all this money on a nitrous system that takes forever to get ready because I'm turning the vehicle on and off. And you're not going to leave the system on when you're in the store because then you're going to drain your battery. I don't have a spare battery set up. So what I'm getting at here is nitrous is kind of a pain to use. And then on top of that, even more so, you need to run a nitrous tune. So... It pulls timing and stuff like that to make the nitrous safe, but it might make your vehicle a dog to drive around town here and there. So it's kind of a pain to use nitrous. Is it cool? Yeah. Does it is a nice little surprise when you're on the street and you psh, psh, psh. oh yeah, it's cool and all, but it's a pain to use. It's not always readily available, and it costs money. People say, oh, nitrous is uh, the, the the poor man supercharger. Nah, maybe back in the day, but I got a 15-pound bottle. It costs 100 bucks to fill that bottle up. Well, you drive like me, that bottle goes quick, real quick. Um, so then, let's say at 10 bottles, you've spent 1000 bucks for a system that's not readily all available on just nitrous. So you, like, you got the cost of putting it all together and putting it in, and then you got to constantly fill up the bottle. By that time, you might as well have just bought a different type of forced induction system. So I'm getting tired of the nitrous. I'm going to keep it for now. Unless somebody wants to buy it, I'll get rid of it. No problem. But let's move on to the next topic. Oh my God. Look at those. So I don't know how many of you are on Facebook and see my post, but yeah, I went ahead and I purchased these. These are 6176. Precision turbos, they are journal bearing. I have my reason for buying those. Maybe I'll make a separate video over all these all over all over again. But um I went ahead and I got these while I could. Uh, Precision actually put out a video on their YouTube channel for these exact turbos for people that have, I think they said uh, six liters or above cubic um, um six liters or above for motors. And these were rated at like 1300 horsepower for motors that are my size. For me, that's plenty. And it's actually way more than I'm ever going to need. And there's several reasons why. Um, and I think I'm gonna make another video to touch on that. Um, simply put, my transmission can't take all that power. And there's all, all the other drivetrain parts and the motor is only rated for a thousand horsepower itself, but I don't really wanna push the envelope on that. And I'm, at, I'm gonna make another video. So maybe like three videos today. Um, so there are the turbos. They are going to be a slow progress or project, I should say, because like I said, I was, I've been dumping all kinds of money towards this thing over and over and over again. Um, so if I sell the, the nitrous kit, it'll buy blow off valves, wastegate, maybe even the intercooler. I don't know. Um, but I need those things to keep running this, this, this turbo setup. Then I got to get, uh, um, uh, 
piping done to run all the induction and exhaust and stuff like that. So it's going to cost money. I'm going to pull money that I make from YouTube, from you guys watching to go towards this. But I've been taking a lot of money out of pocket to do things here and there and I'm kind of done with it. Uh, this winter, the way the world is is headed right now, it's kind of hard to make content. There's nothing going on. And then sometimes people don't even want to meet up because the whole coronavirus crap. So it, 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 it sucks right now making content. Um, money is strained left and right. I know everybody's feeling a pinch in their pockets one way or another from today's world. But uh, that's a little quick update on... Uh, What's been going on? So I have twin turbos. Woo! From Precision Turbo. I'm gonna hit them up. Maybe even could try and get a sponsorship. Who knows? All kinds of bumper parts. Big old box of expensive hardware. Um, and yeah. So that's that, guys. Been running into nothing but issues. Been trying to fix things, make things better. One day this will be done. <laughs> And I'll get you better stuff. But for now, if you like what you see, like, subscribe to everybody that keeps sticking around. Thank you very, very, very much. I will have better stuff out. I promise. I got turbo sitting in front of me. So, like you see, like, subscribe. Thank you for coming to Team Mopar.